Hello everybody, my name is Toongal90 and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be looking at the game called The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. Now I don't remember if you remember the game that I played. It was more of like a uh, interactive story called My Father's Long Long Legs. Uh, this is kind of along the same lines of it's an interactive story. Uh, you get to kind of pick and choose your actions. But there are different endings to this game. There are multiple different endings to this game, and you can actually achieve all of them in one go. Not in one go, but, like, it's possible to get all of them. So uh, we're going to see if I can do that and not get freaked out, because this is a, also a horror story kind of thing. So let's see how well I get scared. Okay, here we go. You are 11 years old. What is your best friend's name? Uh, none of these. Um, shoot. I Let's see. I was 11. How who was my friend when I was 11? I think Ashley was her name. So there you go. Your best friend Ashley has invited you to a sleepover at her house this weekend. Yay! You've been friends since first grade, so asking your mom is basically only a formality. I'm going to ask my mom. You've never confirmed this, but you suspect that babysitter may charge extra when there are or when there are two kids. You sometimes feel like staying somewhere else is the only way you can help out. Oh, is mom only a single parent? Oh boy. It's really quiet. There's supposed to be music with this, or at least sound. Your best friend Ashley has invited you over. Oh. We just start over. Okay. <laughs> hey, I wanted to be a good kid and make sure we could actually go. I'm just that kind of person. Gotta be crystal clear that the fact of it, it's okay to leave to go to my friend's house. On Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack, get in a fight with your younger sister, pack some more, and watch some TV. Really? So I'm the older sister this time. Interesting, so actually, I am the youngest of two, so, hey, I am in control to some degree. At six sharp, you're standing on the sidewalk outside Ashley's home while your mom idles in her car nearby. She leans out the window to you. You behave yourself, okay, she says, as always. I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. <sighs> yes, mom. I'll pick you up tomorrow at three, she says again, as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the day. If you play outside, be careful. It's going to rain. It's probably going to rain. Uh, kiss my mom goodbye. My mama, I love her. After your part, your mom drives down the street, has peering around the corner. You turn back to Ash's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You see Ashley waving to you from her bedroom on the second floor. Hello, Ashley. Well, we got the sound. Holy shit. It's 6 p.m. Okay, wow. Ash's mom meets you just inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes, but you can drop your stuff off in the den. You and Ashley are camping out there tonight. Okay. You drop off your sleeping bag and overnight bag, or your sleeping and overnight bags in the corner of the den, and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch is a grandfather clock. I can't read. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a set of patio doors on the far right side of the room, you can see the sky is just as gray as it was when you left your mom. When your mom left. Framed pictures line the walls over the dark fireplace. Hangs a monstrous pair of antlers. Oh, yep, those were pretty big. From a buck that Ashley's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's the big screen TV. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Ashley's house is than yours. Anyway. Your dog. Oh. Okay, well, more stuff just added. Ashley enters the room while you weren't paying attention, and she now stands in the doorway smiling expectantly. Are you ready for dinner? Yeah, I'm hungry. Dinner passes quickly. Tonight's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, one of Ashley's favorite meals, as her mom points out while piling a helping on your plate. Ashley's father cracks a beer and jovially interrogates you about how much trouble you and Ashley are getting into at school. Oh. Wait, that wasn't a beer at all. It's a glass of lemonade. Why would you ever think it was a beer? Ashley's father doesn't drink alcohol. You're quite certain of the fact now that you remember it. Well, whatever. Okay. So now he sips lemonade and jovially interrogates us. Okay, great. Dessert of the helping bowl is a heaping bowl of ice cream drizzled in chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. The choc the grandfather clock chimes in the den. Jesus! Holy shit! Oh, God, that was loud. Hang on. Oh, God. I There's, like, no audio at the beginning of this to actually judge how loud this is gonna be. Holy crap, that scared me. Okay, well, first jump scare of the game. I hope you're all proud of me. I lasted this long. You go along now, says Ashley, Mom, smiling from her side of the table. We'll clean up. In, we'll clean up in here. Let's go get the TV ready. The two of you leave and leave the dining room and head upstairs. Wait, the den's on the second floor. 
Wouldn't the den be on the same? Ah, uh, just uh, whatever. Wow, it's dark. Holy crap, it's dark. Ashley's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there, but there's a stable, sizable one here. Flush with the wall opposite the full size bed. We'll take the 64 down first, said Ashley, heading towards her TV and opening the entertainment system ca center cabinet. But, uh, it's her progress. Oh, it's her prerogative, of course. She gets to choose what you play first, usually. But as Ashley begins to unhook the cord for the N64 from the TV, you catch sight of other things she has in there. All major stuff. An old N uh, SNES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast. Wow. When is this supposed to take place? These are some pretty old platforms. But some other things too. Things you don't normally, you don't recognize. A large black box with green ha highlights. A small pur a smaller purple one. A strange white and yellow tower with what looks like gloves resting on hooks on either side. A white cone. A compact white cone. What are those? Ashley looks at the cluster of the cabinets. <clears throat> Oh yeah, they're pretty cool. I can't show them to you, though. They're still secret. I promised my uncle. Of course, you suddenly remember. Her uncle. The uncle who works for Nintendo. Name drop! <laughs> and the cord on the grandfather clock is ticking softly through a nearby- Okay. Uh, let's look at the frame pictures. <clears throat> you walk around the perimeter of the den inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are family portraits from years past, Ashley creating- cradled lovingly between her father, mother and father, or any one of the three on their own. A happy, tidy family. Uh, look for the pictures of her uncle. You don't find any. Not one. The only pictures here are of Ashley and her parents. You don't know why this makes you feel uneasy. Time passes. Um, uh, Ashley is parked at the front of the large, front of the large TV, playing something on the Nintendo 64. Talk to Ashley? Uh, school. You begin talking about a mutual acquaintance who moved away, but Ashley quickly changes the topic. Hours passes. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, it wasn't as loud as the first time. You're in the den. Uh. Think about Ashley's uncle? It began with Mew. Oh, we're going with the Pokemon. Okay. You didn't believe her at first when Ashley came to school one day and told you that she finally called him Mew. Prove it, you said. So she pulled out her Game Boy and showed you. There it was, Mew. The 500, no, 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 nope, nope, hang on. The 151st Pokemon available only to players at prom promotional events somehow unlocked on Ashley's game. It's really strong, she said. It KOs every enemy in one hit. Ashley demonstrates this claim in, at recess when you and some other friends link game, game Boys to do battle. You were the first one down. No one else got a single hit on Ashley's Mew. You asked how Ashley managed to get it. Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Ashley. You were walking home together past one of the construction crews, and Ashley still lived next door to you at the time. Oh. Construction crews? There had been a storm not too long ago. Trees were down all over town. Buildings had collapsed? That's a, that's a tense thunderstorm. Good God. You were standing at the intersection with, with Ashley as a truck rumbled by, loaded with ragged tree trunks. What a bad storm. Um, so I actually lived next door to you at the time. Wait, this couldn't have been too long ago. When did Ashley move? There was something nice about being neighbors. Huh. Oh. He also got me this new Game Boy, said Ashley, pulling it out of her pocket. You hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes, Ashley now had a sleek new Game Boy Color. Until today, she had one of the old ones, a big gray brick like yours. This one, special edition, said Ashley. Isn't it cool? You agreed. You snap out of your reflections. Um. I'll remember my own Mew. Because I want to. You got your own Mew, and eventually. Another friend had Game Shark, which you borrowed one day. You spent the entire night unlocking every Pokemon you couldn't obtain in your own game copy of the game, and you hadn't tra traded for, including Mew. It didn't one hit KO at most enemies. It was incredibly weak, and you shamefully create cheated the game further to make it strong enough. It even looked differently from Ashley's. Huh. Your Mew was small, even cute, standing with its round, cheerful eyes. But when Ashley's had wiped out every everyone at school, it had looked completely different. Compact, snarling, fierce. Whoa. So it looked different from Ashley's. You asked her why. What? Uh, that had been been here in the den. Oh, that thing? It had been a while since anyone talked about that about Pokemon. 
Uh, well, my uncle got me a special edition Mew, first of all, she said, smirking a little, but not looking away from the PlayStation game she was playing. Wait, I thought she was playing Nintendo 64. She was, no, she's playing a 64, not PlayStation, unless she changed it, but I don't remember anything about that. That's why mine looked different. Second of all, mine can one-hit KO because it's the real Mew. Sorry to burst every child's bubble out there, but Pokemon is not real. I actually had moved by then, but how long was that after the first storm? After she got Mew? You can't remember. So I'm not asking her currently in time, I'm asking her when she had moved, where she had gotten the Mew from. Huh. So it's the real Mew. Excuse me, you asked what she meant by that. Just what I said, actually replied. You cheated and got a fake Mew. So of course there'd be problems, glitches and junk. You felt <laughs> you felt your cheeks redden. But not me, Asher said again. I got the real Mew, and only me. My brother was so jealous. Wait a minute. She has a brother? I don't remember seeing pictures. Ashley's brother. What about him? Why does remembering that comment make you feel uneasy? You snap out of your reflections. Okay, we're still in the den. Ashley's mother bur- Oh, wow, okay, wow. Well, forgot parents were here. Hi, mom! Hi, Ashley's mom! Bustles into the room holding a large ceramic bowl filled with pocket under her arm. How are you kids doing? She asked. Good, said Ashley, her eyes not moving from the television. I hope you're having fun, said Ashley's mom. Here's some popcorn. Extra butter. She places it on the floor next by Ashley. Almost immediately, Ashley is shoveling popcorn into her mouth. Meanwhile, her mother smiles first at her and then back at you. There's sodas in the kitchen if you get thirsty, she says, and some pizza from the other night if you get hungry. Uh, we had a gigantic meal. Uh, okay. I know, like, if you, especially, like, when you're a kid, whenever you go over to, like, a friend's house, like, the parents are just kind of like, hey, you have free range of whatever, go crazy. But, like, this is a bit, a bit too much. Uh, thank you. She looks at Ashley. Your father's gone to bed. I'll be there soon myself. I want you two to keep it quiet, all right? Yes, mom, Ashley says tiredly. Oh, and before I forget, she adds, your uncle called. He suddenly had some business here in town tomorrow, and he's driving in early. He'll be here around midnight. For the first time, Ashley stops playing the game. She stops eating and turns to look at her mother. Okay, she says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, Mom. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. Hmm. The bowl of popcorn on the floor. You got a handful of butter of popcorn. It's buttery, buttery and delicious. Okay, great. I'm gonna look at the framed walls again. Or the the framed pictures on the wall. Uh happy to tell you, wait, no, there's something wrong here. Yeah. Where's Ashley's brother? I was right! You knew she had a brother. You knew you know it except except he's not here in any of the pictures, and you think harder about the brother. He was older. Not much. One or two years. A jerk sometimes, but not more of a jerk than you are to your little sister. When it snowed, your mom would pay him to shovel the sidewalk outside your house. He left next door. His name was, uh, you can't remember his name. Ask Ashley about her brother. Why aren't there any pictures of your brother up here? Okay, she's playing Mario Kart, so she's playing Nintendo 64. Why did it say PlayStation? Ashley paused the game she's playing and gives you an odd look. I don't have a brother, she says, but I remember him. There's a long moment of uncomfortable silence broken only by distant thunder, the Nintendo. Okay, so now we're back to the Nintendo and the clock ticking. You're such a weirdo, says Ashley and turned back to the Nintendo. The subject, it seemed, has been dropped. Time passes. Uh, this is weird. I'm going to ask about the visit. Your uncle stays with you when he visits? Yeah, said Ashley nonchalantly. He lives pretty far away, so he just drops by. Isn't that a little weird? Ashley gives you a look that you don't like very much. How would you know? You don't even have an uncle. I guess so. You drop the, conver you drop the conversation in silence. Uh, I'm gonna ask, wait. So why is your uncle coming? Ashley shrugs, business, but I thought he worked for Nintendo. He does, said Ashley frowning, but not looking away from the TV. He's really important there. Uh... Does Nintendo have a lot of business here? 
Why else would my uncle be coming? Said Ashley, as if you're ask, as if you asked the dumbest question in the world. Okay, well now she's she switched to Zelda. This is weird. Uh, what sort of business? Ashley pauses the game and turns to you, visibly agitated. How should I know? I don't work for them. Right now she's not quite yelling, but you think if you keep pressing the subject, she might. I'm not sure I believe you about your uncle. Ashley takes a moment to respond, as if she's not quite sure she heard cor correctly. What? I don't believe your uncle works for Nintendo. You think you've finally done it. Ashley stands up, fish clenched, fits, fists, ah, clenched at her sides, mouth twisted horribly as she struggles to say something. You watch as she takes a step forward and you clench your teeth and wait. Ashley darts forward and pushes you back on the hardwood floor, cracking your skull against the carpet. Ow! You take an intense sense of and throw a punch before she can go for you again. Uh, I'm probably dazed. You lie there. Expect another punch or kick, but you're surprised nothing happens. So you sit up to see Ashley standing there, arms still stiff at her side, breathing heavily. You realize she's, you realize she's close to crying. Are you okay? She, Ashley shakes her head as if remembering something. Never mind, she says. You want to say something more, but she's already re-immersed in her video game. Take a breather. Uh, talk to Ashley? Ask Ashley- Oh god, there's so many options now! Ask if Ashley thinks the storm will be as bad as the last one. Do you think the storm will be as bad as the last one we had? You remember the storm? Yeah, you said nodding. But no one remembers the storm, she says. It was big. It took down trees. That's impossible, Ashley says. Im impossible. No one remembers. What's going on here? Uh... The atmosphere is picked up. I don't like this. He he came out of the storm. I was home alone, Ashley begins, her eyes growing distant. Mom was at work. Dad was Dad was out at the bar. So he did drink? Where was your brother? Yeah, you remember him too. He was there, upstairs. He said that the brightest lightning he it was the brightest lightning he'd ever saw. Then the knocking started. What happened then? I answered the door when the knocking started. He said he was lost and hungry. He said he could help me. All I had to do was promise to feed him. What is that? It's my uncle, Ashley says. Or that's what he told me to call him. I don't really know. I don't know what he is. Uh, I want to go home. Oh, fuck. No, you can't. You can't. He's already on his way. There it is, like a voice. Not something you heard exactly, but still somewhere in the back of your head. I sure heard it too. See? See, he's almost here. I'm calling my mom. Passing through the empty dining room, you enter the kitchen where the phone sits on the counter. Call mom. Dial your mom's work number and wait. She picks up after three rings. I want to go home. Something in your voice seemed to give, seems to give her pause. Okay, she says after a moment. I'll call the sitter and tell her to come pick you up. It's probably be an hour. Is that okay? <sighs> Can't you make her come here faster? That's not going to happen, honey. Just sit tight. Thank you. I think? Of course, she says with a hint of a sigh. I'll call her now, okay? She'll be there in an hour. Be safe. Hangs, hangs, she hangs up. I have a feeling I'm going to be dead soon. You turn to the den. Ash is sitting there on the floor, silently on the floor as you come in. You're leaving, aren't you? She says, uh, I wouldn't be that mean. You're, this joke's, the joke, this joke you're playing is really mean. I should have known it was different. You're remembering too much. Huh. You're, if your uncle's so powerful, why can't he just keep me here? Ashley frowns. He gets weak. He can't do as much. Is that, is that why things have been different? Is he weaker now? Please. Ashley says, please don't go. I've never not feed him. And if I don't, I'm not sure what will happen. So you're just gonna- So you just want me to get eaten or whatever? Are you kidding me? No, please no, it's not- I think he'll kill me. Do you understand? He would kill me if I didn't. <sighs> I'm gonna just pack in silence. Why could you hear him? She asks, but it doesn't seem like she expects you to answer. You both laugh, lapse into, into an awkward silence. Eventually, a car honks outside. Oh. <sighs> You get up to leave. Ashley has wandered over to the fireplace and is looking into its unlit depth, depths as you walk out the door and into the night. 
The scissors from familiar car is parked outside, is parked out front. As you walk closer, you see little sister in the back seat, still in her pajamas. The sitter, a high school girl who lives down the street from you, looks incredibly unhappy to be here, but you think you'll be able to handle her. As you climb back, uh, as you climb into the car, you cast one last look over your shoulder back to the house. The front door is closed. You suddenly can't remember if you did that yourself. The light in the den is still burning. As the sitter pulls away from the house, you stare at the window at Ashley's house, or you stare at the window at Ashley's house. The lights blurred and magnified by the rain streaming down the glass. Eventually, it all slides out of view. You find out the next afternoon about the fire. Oh shit! It started in the den this, that says the paper, where they know there to be a fireplace. Apparently, it was left smoldering at, in that night. There were no survivors. Arson is suspected since an accelerant was used to help the flames overcome the night's heaviest rains. But nothing definitive is ever publicly released on this account. One day after school, you ride your bike to check it out. Parts of the house still stand, walls and beams blackened by the flames. Yellow caution tape has been looped around the outside and the rubble has been totally cleared out, of, out by the city. You decide to investigate. The second floor has either mostly burned away or fallen through, but standing in what used to be the den, you look up at the hole that would have been Ash's room. The broken glass and charred drywall crunches beneath your feet until you step on something that isn't glass. You look down. There in the mess is what looks like a Game Boy. It's a Game Boy Color, not at all scruffed or damaged. In the back is a small cartridge, a copy of Pokemon Blue. I'm leaving the Game Boy! You leave the ruined house and hop back on your bike, pedaling back home. Your mom doesn't have work tonight, and since she knows you're taking recent events hard, she promised to take you and little sister to the movies. You don't think about Ashley at all. Holy shit. Um, oh! Whoa! All unsaved data will be lost. You went home early and was lucky you did. Ashley and your family died in a fire that night. Interesting. Okay, but they're different endings. What is this? Just play games, take it easy, and have a good time. I think I freaked over. Meet your guests at the door. Oh, are these hints? Okay. That's one. Things are getting a little weird here. Try to run, but it may turn out to be a game of hide and seek. Yeah, it's definitely weird here. Decide you don't feel like spending the night. Call your mom and ask her to take you home. Be sure you have enough time for your ride to show up. Some things you don't remember doesn't... Some things you remember don't match what you are, what you see. Learn what you can. Ask questions. Have a serious talk. Don't be mean, but still. Get out of there. And then make what might be the worst decision of your life. Oh! So am I supposed to take the Game Boy? I don't really want to. And then we have this one down here, which I don't know what that means. So let's restart at 7 in the den. One quick question. Then, was your father's friend drinking beer at dinner? No, he doesn't drink. Okay. How am I going to play this? Well, I've already done this. Okay, well, I guess I'll just jump forward to when something new happens, I suppose. Hang on, guys. Let's see what. Let's see how this plays out. You head to the kitchen thinking you might grab a soda from the fridge. On the way, you head through the dining room. Ash's mom and dad are still there. Okay. The table has been cleared and they're still sitting in the same exact place as you left them. In fact, you realize they aren't moving at all. What the hell? They sit there, completely still like mannequins. Ash's dad is holding up his glass of lemonade and is afraid to take a drink. Ash's mom has her head turned and her mouth slightly open as if she's frozen immediately after you and Ashley left the dining room. Attempt to talk to them? Are you okay? They don't respond. Thunder rumbles outside. They don't seem to notice. Please, are you okay? They aren't even blinking. Run past them into the kitchen. When you're in the empty kitchen, you're in the empty kitchen. The dining room is behind you. You grab something out of the fridge or exit the, um, uh, let's get some soda and exit the kitchen. I'm back in the den. I'm still in the den. Okay. Tell Ashley about her parents. You tell Ashley what you saw. What? She asked, looking over her shoulder at you and pausing her game. Uh, your parents are sitting- Okay, I'm gonna stay. I, I would probably say I wanna go home, but I'm gonna stay this time. Your parents are sitting in the dining room still. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. 
Are you sure? Said Ashley, frowning at you. I bet they're just being weird. Give me a second. She stands and moves out of the room. She points back to the 64. You can play my game if you want, and I'll play a little. After moments of, hesita of hesitation, you sit down and play the game Ashley has, has running. It's a little like Zelda, but it's not a game you're familiar with. The colors are a little weird. Still, it's relaxing. After a while, Ashley comes back. They look fine to me. Mom says she's going to bring us some popcorn. But I saw them. Nice try for a prank, though, said Ashley, seeming to ignore you. Oh, and one more thing, she says while resuming her spot in front of Nintendo. Thanks for sen sending me out there. Out then. Mom made me help her put clean up after all. Uh, special company. What? Oh, my uncle's coming to visit. Time passes. Huh. Go to the bathroom. You head to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a, line, a linen closet, and a toilet. The shower is pristinely clean. Are you done here? A linen closet. The linen closet filled with fluffy large towels and washcloths. You're not sure why you looked in here. Are you finished? The toilet. You go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Are you done here? Guess so. Jesus. Okay, so here we have the popcorn. So she pays it by Ashley. I say thank you. Here around midnight. And she's gone. It's nine, so I have three more hours. This is going to be interesting. Um, why is... Oh, I feel like I've already done this. Uh, what sort of business? Oh, okay. I, just, I guess just drop the conversation. Huh. I guess I'll reminisce about Mew for a second. Okay, let's... Hmm. Sure. No, I've already done that. Uh, something's wrong here. Look okay, at the pictures. He's not here. He's not here at all. Should you ask Ashley about her brother? Yes. Then why can't you remember his name? Ask Ashley about her brother. Is your brother spending the night with one of his friends? Ashley pauses the game as she's playing and gives you an odd look. He d I don't have a brother, but I remember him. There's a long moment of uncomfortable silence broken only by the distant thunder of the Nintendo and the clock ticking. You're such a weirdo, says Ashley, and turns back to the Nintendo. The subject, it seems, has been dropped. Time passes. Okay. It begins raining outside. So now it's ten. Do I want to call my- I don't really need to call my mom. Because I'm trying to stick it through, because I want to see- Okay, so there was one where it just says I leave to give myself enough time. It's 10 o'clock now if I call my- because I don't remember when I called my mom before. You passing hesitantly through that now empty dining room, you enter the kitchen where the phone says on the counter. Call mom. Picks up at 3. I want to go home. Yes, thank you. Of course, she says with an episode. Okay, yep. <laughs> Ash doesn't even look away from the TV as you come in. Quietly begin- Uh, announce that you're leaving. What? Ash stands up, not even bothering to pause the gate. No, you can't leave. It's almost time. I'm not having- Almost time for what? You can't go. Says Ashley, ignoring your question. There's so much stuff I have planned for tonight. I'm just gonna let you play, play the next Zelda game, the one that's not even out yet. Before you can say anything, she's already running upstairs. Ashley continually runs up and down the stairs, bringing you games and consoles while you pack up your things. Every time she presents something new, you ignore her or brush it off with an uncaring shrug. Please, just stay. S just stay the night, please. Outside, you hear the car honk. <laughs> no, you said, with your bag, night bag slung over your shoulder. You march out the front door and exit into the night. As you walk to the stairs, car, you see Lewis. Okay, um... Climb, okay. As she is standing in the doorway, totally still. Not screaming, not crying, not doing much of anything. The car begins to pull away from the house, and as you watch, you see her parents appear in the door behind her. Wave. Without acknowledging you, Ash's parents lay her hand lay their hands on her shoulders. You recognize their movements something unnatural, something stiff and mechanical. They turn Ashley back to the house and close the door just as everything slides out of view. When you turn around in your seat to look out your window, you can't even see the house's lights. Ashley doesn't show up to school on Monday. Or Tuesday. Or Wednesday. On Thursday, you ask your teacher, Mr. Scott, where Ashley is. He blinks at you confusedly. 
Oh, he said eventually. Ashley, well, I'm surprised you didn't tell she didn't tell you about this, but she and her family moved away. The house is empty when you ride on your bike that by that afternoon. It somehow seems even larger without anything or anyone in it. A for sale sign stands in the front yard out stands in the yard out front. Go home. You never see Ashley again, and eventually as years pass, you forget about her entirely. Okay. Exit. You left early and Ashley moved away. You weren't interested in being friends with her anymore anyway. Okay, so... Okay, so I think now what I have to do is I have to... I'm going to take guesses here. It's going to require some editing on my part to make this all not seem so long for an episode. Uh, this one, I just have to meet his uncle. Or meet the uncle. I don't have to run away or anything. This one, I'm going to try to run away, but I don't make it. I just play a game of hide and seek. This one, I play like I did it the first time, but I take the Game Boy with me. Okay, so let's, let's do this all again. He doesn't drink. Okay, here we go. Seven thirty. Oh, I've already done this. Well, oh, but but but. Okay, so now it's. Oh, now it's. Oh yeah, now it's eight. Um. It's eight thirty. Uh, watch Ashley play. Oh, didn't mean to highlight that. I just decided you should play the next game alone. It's pretty boring. You're at a party having a conversation with a man in a business suit, but for some reason you can't move the camera up to see his above his mouth. He's always smiling. He tells you a story about how people always mis make always mistaken him for someone else. Did you figure it out? So Ash Ashley once the man in the game has apparently stood up and left the conversation. Figured what out? So was, there, was there something to figure out? Of course. Ashley laughs. I guess not, she says before putting her choice of game in the Nintendo 64. You realize you've played for quite some time. Okay. Okay, and here comes the popcorn. Thank you. Around midnight. She's gone. It's now nine. Uh. Want to actually play? You're feeling anxious, apparently, and you're apparently showing it. Ashley looks your way and bites her lip. Watch this, she says. On screen, the game's main character is in the car on a crowded street in what looks like a, vir like a virtual New York City. As she revs up and begins mowing down pedestrians giggling. You don't think it's very funny, but to Ashley, it's hilarious. After a while, she stops the car and waits. An ambulance appears, and once the paramedic exits, she beats him to death with a baseball bat. Isn't this great, she asks? This goes on for a while. I hit the wrong key, or the wrong button on the mouse, and... I don't remember Grand Theft Auto being on Nintendo. This goes for a while. The clock begins to rain. Okay, so now it's raining. Um, it's buttering delicious. Uh, talk to Ashley. School. Ashley tells you that she heard a teacher you both had in grade school before is in the hospital. You ask why, but she doesn't know. You spent time reminiscing about that prior year. An hour passes. It's 11, so I only have one more hour until he comes. Can I talk to Ashley again? Games. Talk about how much you like games. Ashley raises an eyebrow at your mark. What do you like about games? The chance to be a different sort of person. The challenge, solving puzzles and stuff. Being a hero in the stories. Ah, these are all good. I, as dumb as it sounds... And though I'm terrible at puzzles, I kind of like the challenge. I like good stories. Because I like twists. I like a shocking ending. That's why I like games that have good stories. It's kind of like, if, if you intrigue me with how different it is, I like it. So I'm going to say, well, yeah, I'm going to say this, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice feeling. But something in her voice tells you she's thinking about something else. Are you okay? Do you think it's weird to play games? She asks suddenly, and then before you can say anything else. I mean, is it weird for a girl to play games? I don't know. Ashley shakes her head. It's just, you know, these guys, those guys at school. Wait. 
Girls don't play video games. Fuck you! Yes, we do. Why don't you play girl games? You're not as good as at this as the boys would be. I don't want to trade Pokemon. Oh! I didn't get to click that. I didn't click that. That just went away. Yeah, yeah, but they're jerks. Who cares what they have to say? Ashley strokes tiredly. Yeah, who does care? Without a word, she returns to Nintendo to the Nintendo, leaving you alone with your thoughts. The clock chimes. You're in the den. Okay. The grandfather clock chimes an hour. The hour as Ashley suddenly looks up from her 64. It's time. Is your uncle here? Okay. Yep. That's loud. That's so loud. That's him, she said, as she says, standing up. I should go let him in. As she leaves for the den, you realize you could follow, but part of you really wants to feel safe being scarce for a bit. I'm gonna follow, because I'm gonna meet him. The knocking continues persistently as you follow Ashley to the front of the house. What is that sound? Outside the pebble glass at the front window, you can see a tall, dark shadow. As she goes to the door, undoes the dead bolt, and cracks it, and cracks it open. You can't come in, she says to whomever is standing outside on the porch, then looks over her shoulder at you. Sorry, she says. What is that sound? Before you can ask her what there is to be sorry about, the store slams open. Hello, child. Come closer, child. No more worries, child. I'm hungry, child. No more worries, child. Hello, child. Oh. Oh my god. Stop it, child. Hello, child. Oh god. Oh god. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh god. Oh. Well, that was. Uh, okay. I think I think I died. Okay. Undefined error. You met the uncle who works for Nintendo. Alright, so now I gotta go back, get to the end, and then run away. Is that. Because that's what I get for number two. Yes. Okay. Here we go. I was just playing something that looks like a, uh, like Bomberman, but it's not the game you're familiar with. You watch for a while, eventually turns to you, turns to look at you. Come on, you want to play? Play co-op. There's co-op. You ask? Of course. Ash says, actually handing you the controller. You don't know the game, but still, it feels oddly familiar. She only has to give you a few pointers on how to move the camera. You play through a level or two. Okay, now it's eight. Talk to Ashley. Games. They say the same stuff about me. Girls don't play- okay, blah blah blah. Could beat you at any game. No, you don't understand here. What I really needed to do is- you're talking about- wait. Whoa, whoa, hang on! There was more there! Holy shit! Wait, 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 wait! Uh, but- But they're jerks. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here's the popcorn. Thank you. Midnight. Blah blah blah. Thank you. It is- Nine. Go to the bathroom. There's nothing here. It's nine thirty. This is like uh, this is like the hardest thing to get time to move forward. Uh, come on. Hey, it's ten. It begins to rain outside. Uh, time passes. It's ten thirty. Um, ball of popcorn. Oh God, move on. Ashley invites you to over to play a game of Mario Kart. Ashley wins every round pretty easily, and you start feeling like this was a mistake. She's just too competitive, and frankly, a lot better than you. Good game, she says, smirking. Good game. Try again. Let's switch it up for a bit. You've been playing for a while. Okay, so now it's 11. We have one more hour to go. Uh. You grate your teeth. My uncle will be here soon. This is actually looking at the clock. You knew that, of course. She smiles at you. Want to play one more before he gets here? Sure. For a while, you, for quite a while, you have hardly wandered on a map in Goldeneye while actually repeatedly headshots you. Is your uncle here? Yep, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna run this time. I'm gonna be scarce for a bit. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Okay, you run down the hall to the bathroom and lock the door behind you. Or at least this could have been the bathroom. The walls are bare and white and there's no sink or toilet. There's some odd featureless white boxes that could stand in for a shower or a linen closet. I'm gonna go to a linen closet. Your 
crawl into the plain white box that is the size of a linen closet and close it behind you. From the front of the house, you hear the front door slam open. After that, you don't hear anything except, Child, the rain. No, not just the rain, but the voice at the back of your head, like, I'm coming for you, child. Like something you can't even begin to describe. Through the lock, though you lock the door behind you, you hear it open easily. Something walks in. Close your eyes. You're not, you're not sure how you know something is out there because you don't exactly. Oh, child, hear it moving, but you know it's there and you know it's stopped. Poor, poor child, right outside your hiding spot. It opens the door and even though you immediately realize it doesn't have hands. Oh, I'm so, oh, so hungry, child. You cannot run, child. Hello, child. No more worries, child. Hello, child. Oh, see so struggling, see so screaming. I have friends for you. Friends for you. In the dark, you will play forever. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, it's so much worse. Okay. Run. But the uncle who works for Nintendo found you. All right. One more to go. God, the sounds are weird. Oh, I don't like this. Whew. Here we go. One more time. I got this. So I think I remember correctly, I had to get this to 11, then come my mom. Okay, so when it reaches 11, I gotta call. Time passes. It's 7.30. Watch Ashley play. And for a moment, she looks at you. She, for a moment, though, she looks over at you. You play this one, she says. Okay. This game is kind of spooky. Your character just has a flashlight and running around in some underground tunnels. Occasionally you hear what sounds like digging. You don't like it. I swear to God, this is a callback to my father's long, long legs. I will not be happy. That's what I had to do in that game. Shut up. Ash is watching you. It seems to be amused at how uncomfortable you are. You don't say anything, so you don't look weak. You play it for a while, even though there doesn't seem to be an ending. Is that supposed to be metaphorical for what's happening right now? Because I'm a little worried. Okay, it's eight. Ashley decides to play the game next time you get alone. It's pretty boring. You're having a party. You're at a party having a conversation with a man in a business suit. Okay, this is one I tried to play before and I messed up, I guess. So, play. The game is kind of spooky. You care. Oh. Okay. Oh, here's the popcorn. Thank you. Midnight. Gone. And it is nine. Because when I, when I left with enough time, I called at 10. I'm pretty sure the first time I played this, I called at 11. Um, you're leaving, aren't you? This joke you're playing is really mean. I should have known it was different. You're remembering too much. I'm, I'm kind of like, I think I solved this like too quickly the first time I played it through. Because I just, I read through everything and nothing made sense. If your uncle's so powerful, why can't you just keep me here? And she frowns. He, he gets weak. He can't do as much. Is that is that why you have why things have been different? Is he weaker now? Are you begin packing your things. Please, please don't go. I've never not fed him, and if I don't, I'm not sure what will happen. Continue to pack in silence. Why could you hear him? She asked, but it doesn't seem like she expects you to answer. You both lapse into an awkward silence. Eventually, a car car honks outside. You leave. You get up to leave. Ashley is wandering over the fireplace and is looking into unlit depths as you walk to the out the door and into the night. Back to the house, the front door's closed, and the light in the den are still burning. Out of view, fire, go in to check, decide to investigate. If it isn't glass, it's a Game Boy. I'm going to take Ashley's Game Boy because you know what? I am just sure. Looking from side to side as if anyone might actually be watching, you pick up the Game Boy and flick on the power switch. After clicking through the Pokemon inter screens, you find that there is no saved game on the cart. It's like it's brand new. You pull, you turn off the Game Boy and stuffing it into your pocket, return home. Your mom is standing in the kitchen when you arrive, doing dishes, and your little sister is watching some annoying cartoon. Remember to take a bath and get dressed before seven, mom calls. Remember, you're fairly certain she never told you to do that in the first place. You walk into the kitchen, drop your backpack on the linoleum floor. Why do I need to do all that? Silly, she says. Your mom turns from the sink to smile at you and your throat tightens when you see how glassy and empty her eyes are. Don't you remember, she asks. 
Your uncle is coming over for dinner to celebrate his new job. Ah! Okay! Well, you know, I kind of expected something like that to happen, but why would you take the Game Boy? Ah, jeez. What the hell? Repetition with a difference. It is not the time for running. Go where you're not wanted. Go where you've been told you can't go. Go to where you've been told you can't go. The dining room? Okay, if you look at the back, it says, does not exist the kitchen. Go where you're not wanted. Go where you're told you can't go. I think when I ran, I wasn't allowed to go to the kitchen. I went to either the dining room or the bathroom, and I went to the bathroom. <sighs> Here we go. The grandfather clock chimes the hour as Ashley suddenly looks up from the 64. It's time, she says. Time for what? Breakfast here. I hope I did this right. Run to the kitchen. Go anyway. You go to the kitchen. No, child. There's not much of a... This is not allowed, child. Ignore the uncle. Tell the uncle. Ignore the uncle. It falls silent for a moment. It has grown weak since you haven't been feeding it. Take out the Game Boy. From your pocket, you pull out Ash's Game Boy Color. The uncle's somewhere behind you. The half-textured wall is grumbling to itself. Turn on the Game Boy. Start. Pokedex. This isn't time to use that. Pokemon. Item. You. You hope this works. It came to you after you picked up Ash's Game Boy. Still weak from the night of the sleepover. In a moment, you had an understanding of what it was and what it did. How many times have you not made it through the night? How many of your friends had gone before you, wouldn't come after you? How many had taken the Game Boy? It promised you what it promised everyone every time. The newest game, the best consoles, the best strategies, the most talent, the knowledge of tricks and secrets. A family who could and would provide these things. You could play well, play forever, and you'd always be the best, so long as you fed it. And you had an idea. It did not like your first request, but it was hungry and had no choice. So here you are. Option. Save. It's probably not going to save when stop this child. Things are getting so messed up. No, you won't run. Not this time. Item. Wait, can I use this? I can't. Okay. It's time to use that. It isn't time to use that. Uh, Game Boy Color. You. Back. Okay. Fast. Oh, God. Oh, God. What was your best friend's name? Your best friend. Oh, God. Okay. In the corner of the grandfather, the clock ticks softly. Ashley's parked in front of the large TV playing something on the Nintendo 64. Suddenly she jumps as if you're scared by her entering what you when you did and she turns to look at you. What was that? I know about the uncle. Ashley blinks and leaves at you. I don't... I don't know what... Do not... I don't know what you mean. What are you talking about? I, I used to come... I used it to come back here. Stop this. Stop this. Stop this. Ashley looks around uneasily. I hear it too. It's alright. How is this happening? Ashley asks. I'm starving it to death. Ashley shakes her head in disbelief. What are you- okay, what are you here for? What are you doing? The rain outside increases in tempo or stops sounding exactly like rain. I came back to save you. I don't know what this means. Ashley takes a step forward. How did you do that? It doesn't control you. It may seem like it does. It may seem like it's all you have, but it's not. But it's said. It lies. It always lies. But all the- all the others, says Ashley. Gone, 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 gone. I ate them all up. They're gone. No, we're here. We're all here. We're all here still. Gone forever. So many. My parents, my brothers, I don't deserve it. Why did you come back for me? Suddenly Ashley starts crying. Why did you come back for me? Because we're friends. Things are starting to change the uncle. The thing it calls itself an uncle is either on the verge of death or is making a final gamble to stop either of you from leaving. Ashley is still crying. If we don't do something, we'll be stuck. It's okay. Ashley looks up at you. You really came back for me. You really think we can do this? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Oh gosh. Exit. 
No, 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 no. Come back, come back. Oh, gosh. Nope. Oh, move the screen. Sorry. Oh. Do I hit something? You don't understand. The game offered me something I didn't have before. The game gave me a sense of place, a sense of who I was. Oh. I'm sorry for all of this. But this isn't who we have to be. You are my friend. No more games. You are my friend and I'm here for you. Yay! Oh my god, did I do it? Yeah! Oh my god! I've locked, unlocked the author's notes. Oh! Shoot! Oh, this is so awesome! Oh, this is so much fun! As weird as that sounds, this was actually... This was really good! I like the fact that you had to, like, remember certain things of, like, you know, there was a storm, there was the brother that just suddenly does not exist anymore, uh, the fact the uncle would come to a small town, I'm guessing, to do business for Nintendo, like, why would they do that? Uh, the sudden appearances of everything, how she's suddenly so good at games at every single game there is. Oh, it's so good! Oh, it was so good! Oh, it was so good! Ah. Oh. That was so much fun. It's scary as hell. I think I think the reason why it's kind of scary is more of like the sounds that were being made more than anything else. Because the atmosphere was really good. Um, just the sound that the quote unquote uncle made. That's not natural. Uh, God, that was so good. Ah, uh, uh, I'm getting shivers. Oh, it's so good. Yay, I'm happy. All right. Oh, so that was The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. That was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my sultry voice reading to you in fear and desperation to not die, even though I did die a few times. Technically once, I think. No, I, I died twice. Never mind. There's, yeah, never mind. I died twice. <clears throat> Let me rephrase that. But thank you all so much for watching. My name is Tunga90. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Uh... Let's see. Well, I'm just, I'm so, oh, this is so much fun. I love this one. Oh, this is so good. <clears throat> if you want to follow me, if you want to share this on any form of social media, please do so. If you want to follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you'll find links below in the description. Uh, I use those to mainly update my channel as too far as like, you know, something comes up and I can't update a video or something, or if I'm going to do a live stream, go there to kind of look at it, like to kind of look it over, let you guys be informed. Oh, this is so much fun. I love this one. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> Remember to stay animated, my friends. If something doesn't look right, it's probably not right. I'm just going to say that. That was really terrible advice. Uh, let's see. If you hear something saying, child, don't be scared, child, you might want to run. Uh, if it's not like your parents, y you might want to run. <clears throat> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Good night, everybody. Oh, my nose itches. Oh, God. Ow. Oh. Ow, oh, it burns. Oh, thank God this didn't happen. There ain't. Ow. Oh, God, that hurts. Oh, nose. Why do you do these things to me?